Mario Party. It's a game you all know and love, and just so happens to have a lot of similarities to the game that I am making. One of which is moving around a game board based on a dice roll. At first, I thought this would be a pretty simple process, and then I started to think about all the different rules that you have to take into account, such as moving to a previous tile and going around in a circle, and that got me pretty stressed out, and after banging my head against the wall for a day and a half, it turns out it actually is really simple. So allow me to explain exactly how I did this. This is devlog number one for my dream game, Project Guts. Before we jump into any code, allow me to use Dokapon Kingdom as an example of how I wanted the game to flow. When a turn starts, the player will roll to see how many tiles they can move. Once the number is determined, there are two ways that the player can then move to a tile. The first is by tapping the arrow keys in a given direction until their roll hits zero. The second is by going to the map view and clicking on one of the many tiles that the game has determined they can move to. The first is easy enough and can be done with some basic math. Moving to a new tile, you subtract one from the roll. Moving to a previous tile, you add one to the roll. The second, however, is a bit more complex and will require us to do some pathfinding in order to tell the player all possible routes that they can take. To accomplish this, we recursively iterate over all tiles within the distance of the roll number. But if you don't know what recursion is, then that might be a little bit of a confusing explanation. So instead, let's imagine when a player rolls, a ghost emerges from them and begins to move one tile at a time. This ghost represents how the computer is actually calculating the destination tiles. Every time this ghost moves, the roll number of the player gets decremented by one. And if the ghost hits a crossroad, it will split. This process will continue until all ghosts have reached the number zero. And just like that, we have all the tiles that the player can and move to. So that's great, but how do we actually code something like that? Let's take a look. So here we are in the player input class, which is looking for all the player inputs. Specifically, we're going to be looking in the on roll function today, which is checking if the player hits the space bar. If they do, then it's going to run this logic. Uh, first, it's going to create a move calculator. This is going to be doing all that logic we talked about earlier with the ghosts. Uh, we'll jump into there in a second. Then we're going to randomly generate a roll between one and six. Our dice game object in our scene has a max roll and a min roll of whatever we want. So we can change these values. Right now I have them set to a six and a one, which is, you know, a typical dice. So then we're going to call the iterate function on our move calculator, which passes in three things. One, the current tile that the player is on, which is this function down here. It is more or less what it's doing is shooting a ray cast out of the player's butt and seeing the tile that is beneath them. Uh, we're going to pass in a new tile set, which is a custom class I've created uh, that just has some additional logic, but it's more or less just a glorified list of tiles. Uh, we're going to be using that for the pathing so that when we click on a tile, the player will actually move over the tiles to get to the final one. Why? I don't find this useful at all. Then we're going to take the roll and we're going to pass that in. We'll be decrementing that so that we know when to end. So let's go into this iterate function. The first thing we do in here is we check if the roll is zero. If it is, we're going to set that tile as a destination. That's more or less what all that is doing. Then, if it's not zero, we're grabbing all of the active connectors off of a tile. Uh, I went over what the active connectors were in my last video, but I'll go over here again. They're these cubes that are hanging out on the sides of the tiles. If they're gray, it means they're off. If they're red, it means they're on. If they're on, they're shooting out a raycast. Um, so you can see it's connecting the tiles of the game board together so that the player can actually move between them. Uh, it's pretty cool because it allows us to have tiles next to each other that the player actually can't move between. And it also allows us to have one-way tiles. So as we can see here, this is shooting out a laser beam, but this isn't. So the player can only move from right to left in this case. Then we are just iterating over all of those active connectors. We add the current tile we are on into the tile set, and then we call the function that we are actually in. And we continue to just do this recursion until the roll hits zero. Once the roll hits zero, we set the destination of that tile to true. We add this just like we did down here. And that's essentially the path that we have created to this destination tile. And then we add that path into the path manager, which we will be referencing when we actually click on a tile to move the player to it. That's more or less what we're doing. So uh, let's see it in action. So you can see that our dice is between six and one. And if we actually play, there they are. So up here in the top right, you can see what we rolled, which was a two. Uh, and those tiles are indeed two away. Uh, so let's go here. We rolled a one. Now, this is a good example. Uh, these are one-way tiles right here. So you can see the right has, the, has a red, but the left is gray. 
So we can even see that the one-way tile logic in this calculation is working as well. And so we can do that. Uh, and we can just kind of move him over these tile sets, over the paths to get where he needs to be, and it works like a charm. Now, if we really wanted to have fun, what we can do is change this max roll to 50, and we'll say the min roll of, of, of 30, or what have you. So let's say we, we roll 10 die. So I guess the min roll in that case would be 10. The max roll would be 60, right? So let's say we're simulating rolling 10 die. We'll see that this algorithm still works in that case too. Uh, so if we roll, look at that. Look at all of those tiles that have lived. We rolled a 58 and pretty much every single tile on this board uh, you can go to. And if we click on one, you can see he takes the exact path he needs to uh, in order to get there. And that's, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, you can get him in some really fun fun loops if you if you get them up top here yeah we got a 55 there <laughs> there he's moving around um so yeah uh as you can see it scales pretty nicely it's kind of relaxing and fun just to click them around the board um but yeah that's that's pretty much it i'm pretty tired i think i'm gonna get some rest you guys should get some sleep too and if you like what I'm doing here, uh, feel free to give me a subscribe. I absolutely appreciate that. Uh, like, comment, all the bells and whistles, all the things. Um, and thank you guys so much for the support on the last video. Uh, I cannot believe how well it's doing and all the wonderful comments and, and everything. So thank you guys uh, so much for that. Yeah, I will see you again in the next one.